Hi there, I'm Marcus. In this two-part video series, I will show you how to build an application using web components, just using the plain vanilla JavaScript API. And then in the second part of the video series, I will show you how to turn this uh, plain web application into a progressive web application. So let's get started. Here I have a just a stub application. We have a header with some meta tags. We have a body section with a header. We have a main section where we will fill in these news articles. And we have an index file where we're going to add our application logic. So to start off, I will add a load event listener on our window object. So window.add event listener load. The reason I'm adding a load listener here is that I, I don't want to block the initial render with any JavaScript. So by delaying this until the pages had a chance to load, we can make sure that the experience is smooth and fast for our users. So once the window uh, page is loaded, we'll call fetch news. Fetch news will be an asynchronous function where we can call the network and fetch those news articles. So I'll use an async function here, call it fetch news. Doesn't take in any parameters. What I want to do here is first of all get the result of fetching the top headlines. I've extracted these into a separate file here so I can just import these into my main file. So I'll import from newsapi.js. I'm not running any kind of bundling or anything here, so I'll add the JS extension so that the browser is able to find this. So I'll fetch the top headlines URL. I will then fetch that from the network. Once that comes in, we want to extract the JSON from that result. So again, we await result.json. So that will give us the JSON response from the news API. The second thing I need to do is get a hold of this main section of my document. So just a document query selector for the main section. And we'll extract this into a constant main. The second thing we need to do then is take our JSON. There's an array of articles on it and for each of those we will just create a new component for it essentially a news article per article so, so what I'll do here is I'll call document .create element, and we will create a new HTML element of type news article. We'll again extract this to a constant. It's called element. Then on that element we will set the article property on it to the article from our array. And then finally we'll take our main and we'll append this as a child to it. Like that. Okay, so I will now take uh, run this application with just a normal HTTP server and open it up in the browser. What we can see right now is that we have these news article tags in our HTML, but we don't really have any content because we haven't defined, we haven't told the browser how a news article should behave. In order to define a new HTML tag, what I want to do is just create a new file with the same name as the as the HTML tag, so news article.js. And the actual definition of a new HTML tag or a web component is two steps. So the first step is creating a class, news article, and extending from the HTML element class. Once we have the actual implementation of our uh, component, we need to register this with the browser. We do that by calling the custom elements registries define method. So custom elements.define 
we map it from a tag name. So our tag name is news article and the implementation for this tag is this news article class that we just created. Okay, so the only part of the, uh, or the only API we have for this component is that setter for the article where we passed in the article here. So we'll implement this here, set article, takes in the article, and we'll just set the inner HTML in this case to, to a template string that just pulls in the URL, the title, the image, and the description from that. Now that we have the definition, we'll go back to our main file here. We will import this file. So we'll just do an import newsarticle.js. We'll save here and we'll go back to the browser and refresh. So you can see now that those uh, news articles are still here, but now they actually have some content to them. You can see that we have a bunch of news here. Now one of the things that you often hear talked about when people are uh, talking about web components is Shadow DOM. Shadow DOM is a feature of the web component specs where we are able to encapsulate, kind of hide the inner details of a component. If we want to use Shadow DOM in a component, we'll create a constructor for our component here. We'll call super so the HTML element gets to run its setup first and then uh, we'll create a new shadow root for us. So we do this by calling this dot attach shadow. We need to specify mode for it. So mode can be open or closed, but you should always select open. Here, uh, the way we use this is instead of just setting directly the inner HTML of our component, we'll set the inner HTML of our shadow root instead. So we just simply do this.root.innerHTML instead. Now if we run this again, we can see that it still works, but we lost all of our CSS styles. The reason is because the shadow, ROM, shadow DOM essentially shields the inner implementation of this component from any external CSS. Likewise, uh, any styles that we define inside of our component won't leak into the main document. So what we need to do is we need to actually move in the styles into our uh, component itself. So we'll add a style tag here and then we'll copy over those styles. Have those right here, copy them over, save that, put them in here. Since we are already inside of this news article tag, we don't need this extra selector here. So we can just go ahead and select those, delete them save it and go back to our browser, check that everything works as expected. All right, so there we have it. Uh, we have a application built with web components and just plain vanilla JavaScript. We're fetching news, putting them into news articles. In the next part of this video series, I will take this application and turn it into a progressive web application. So if you're interested in seeing how to take an existing app and turning it into PWA, be sure to check out the next video. Thank you.